The night is hot as hell. I'm standing in a lousy room in a lousy part of a lousy town. Actually, it's not half bad. Anyway, I'm reminiscing on the first time I laid eyes on Robert Rodriguez and Frank Miller's hyper-stylized film noir, Sin City. As a 13-year-old kid, I remember thinking to myself, holy sh**, I've never seen anything this violent or badass in my entire life. It was almost like if Pleasantville had a baby with Dick Tracy and it wound up getting raised by Kill Bill. It was one of the best movie-going experiences I've ever had, and I couldn't wait for more. And after nearly an entire decade full of rumors, false announcements, and production delays, a sequel to my beloved Sin City had finally come into fruition. As excited as I am knowing about this, I couldn't help but think, what the hell were they doing the whole time? Spending their wealth on hookers and blow? Did they honestly think making movies like Spy Kids 4 and The Spirit were more important than making a second Sin City movie? And then it hits me like a kick in the nuts. What if it sucks? What if I'm disappointed? What if the novelty had completely worn off? Can't waste my time monologuing about it. I gotta know for sure. Now this is one damn fine coat right here. All that's missing is... Oh. Ah, now we're talking. Okay, I'm not going to do the Mar voice throughout this review, but before we get into it, let's take a brief look at the history of Sin City for better and proper context. The Sin City graphic novels first came onto the scene in 1991 by writer-illustrator Frank Miller, who had previously made a splash in the comic book community with his very unique take on the Batman mythology, The Dark Knight Returns. The comics eventually got the attention of Desperado filmmaker Robert Rodriguez, who wanted to turn the series into a literal big screen translation of the original source, right down to the over-the-top and unrealistic level of comic book violence. After showing him a small test run, Miller was so convinced that the project would work that he wound up co-directing it alongside Rodriguez. The first film was mostly based on three of Miller's graphic novels, including The Hard Goodbye with Mickey Rourke as the vengeful and curved-faced Marv, That Yellow Bastard with Bruce Willis as the disgraced cop Hardigan and Jessica Alba as the targeted stripper Nancy, and The Big Fat Kill with Clive Owen as the badass Dwight and Rosario Dawson as the leader of a group of gun-toting prostitutes, Gale. And as you already know, I just adored the first Sin City movie, and I waited nine years for a sequel to come out. Now it's finally here, does it live up to the hype? Well, let's look at the story, or a series of stories, keeping in line with how the previous film was structured. The first is a short involving Marv, played once again by Mickey Rourke, trying to regain his memory while in pursuit of a group of rich, spoiled jocks. The second stars a new character written specifically for the screen named Johnny, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, whose endless amounts of luck at gambling soon starts to plummet when he plays up against the evil and sadistic Senator Rourke, played by Powers Booth. The third story is another brand new one, and centers on Nancy, reprised by Alba, who's now, spoilers, coping from the death of Hardigan and wants revenge on the man responsible, who happens to be Senator Rourke. And finally, the last segment is based on the story the film was named after, which stars Josh Brolin taking over Clive Owen's role of Dwight, whose old flame, played by Eva Green, comes back to haunt and torment him. And let's just say, if you can't get Jessica Alba to strip naked in your film, Eva Green is definitely your go-to gal. There's a lot to say about this film, both good and not so good. For starters, this movie looks absolutely stunning, just as much if not more so than the first. Being immersed back into this world after such a long hiatus just felt so rewarding. And the same can be said about a few of the returning cast members like Mickey Rourke, Jessica Alba, Bruce Willis, Rosario Dawson, and Powers Booth. Most of them don't get a whole lot to do, but when they're on screen, they do a pretty good job. Maybe with the exception of Bruce Willis, but more on him later. The new cast were welcome additions as well, like Brolin, Levitt, Green, Dennis Haysbert, Jamie Chung, Ray Liotta, and Christopher Lloyd? Great Scott! Some people might disagree with me, but I thought Josh Brolin did a much better job playing Dwight than Clive Owen ever did. Unlike the character Marv, who has a very twisted, upbeat attitude when it comes to killing folks, Dwight is a man who is constantly fueled with rage, and clearly not a man you want to mess with. 
As for Joseph Gordon-Levitt, what can I say? He's practically the coolest mother on the planet right now. I'll watch whatever movie that guy's in. Except for that. And say what you will about Eva Green, but I really enjoyed her devilishly over-the-top performance as the film's main femme fatale. Plus, it doesn't hurt that she's, shall we say, easy on the eyes. Call me. But if the sight of a naked woman offends you, for some reason, don't worry. The film makes up for it with just about as much on-screen violence and mayhem we've come to expect in a Sin City movie, including decapitations, stabbings, shootings, and skull crushings. But as much as I love talking about the good stuff, the movie doesn't come away without its fair share of flaws. As I previously mentioned before, Bruce Willis seems to be the only actor in this that looked completely uninvested. Granted, he's playing a ghost, but much like last year's Abomination A Good Day to Die Hard, all he does is just stand around and do absolutely nothing, except wait for the paycheck. There's also a few subplots that seem to go nowhere that could have been cut entirely from the film. Some of the stories end abruptly and leave a lot to be desired. The timeline is a little inconsistent, and while the film runs under two hours, the pacing could have been just a tad bit smoother. Not much else to really complain about, except for the fact that it took so damn long to make, but overall, I thought it was worth the wait. It's certainly not as great or as fresh as the original, but it's still one of the most visually impressive and downright entertaining films I've seen this summer. So on a scale from 1 to 10, I'm going to give Frank Miller's Sin City a Dame to Kill for a 7.5. And that concludes our show. I'm the host, and I will see you next time on another Midnight Movie Madness.